Here we go. We're up and rolling with the next one, folks. We're just gonna. The second he turns around, he's gonna go, "Oh fuck, it's Japanese writing and what the fuck and shit." But there's so much shit that you can talk about here with FMW that it's. You know, I have a. Fucking you're not gonna know what you're watching until it actually starts taking place. And yeah. I know you're a big enough fan of this. This yeah. is how it aired on TV. That's why this quality is so shitty and grainy yeah. and fucked up. No, but I got a guy I talked to online. Tell me, the FMW women were fucking phenomenal. Oh no, point. shit. Now I'm like, in a total wrestling frame there of mind. Was a, there was always a, there was a rumor. Remember when they brought all these fucking, a lot of those fucking girls in WWF? Yeah. Round with the Launcher Blaze? Yep. I heard a fucking rumor that they fucking, a lot of the guys fucking squashed this ladies division because they got pissed off that these fucking women were out fucking Oh, with, them. The, uh, with FMW or with Medusa? No, it was Medusa and Bull Nakano. This is showing no, the entire no, no. history here of everything here with Makumi Kudo. And, of course, there is... Let the camera get up close in on her so I can say what I have to say. Uh, these two girls start out in all Japan women wrestling dojo with one another. Talking about fucking Combat Toyota and Makumi Kudo. And here's a backstory. You already know a lot of this shit. Uh, and you can Wikipedia, this was kind of makes it sad because I'm telling them my own words and this, that, and the other. Uh, FMW, Jesus Christ, where do you begin with this whole thing? I mean, there is Megumi Kudo, at least her backside. Uh, I that same room. Jesus Lord Almighty. Anybody on this planet would go gaga over her and tell you that she's the most beautiful woman on this fucking planet. And uh, you're about to see why here in a few when you see her coming to the ring and whatnot, but... She actually retired. She was kicked out or asked to leave or evicted from uh, the All Japan Women Dojo in 86 because they didn't think her skills were progressing enough. So Kudo went to teaching kindergarten. And years and years later, that was around like 86, but it happened to her in like 88 where they basically released her and told her, your skills aren't progressing good enough. we got to let you go. So then Kudo goes and becomes a... God, look at that fucking house. Good luck finding a fucking house. You can pack like that these days. But, um... WWF pulls out every fucking... And this is when the FMW is on the major decline because it was after he did big retirement, which he lied about and came back from and did the whole, you know, liar thing. But this is at the point where he's still a babyface. But, um, the last major show that they had... On this day, on their anniversary show, because this is their sixth anniversary, the um, last major one that they had, of course, was 95 with Atsushi Onita and his huge retirement match against, um, <clears throat> against uh, oh, Jesus Christ, Hayabusa. Remember, Hayabusa was supposed to be his ace. It got all screwed up because originally they went to, <clears throat> what was it, Goto, and Goto said, uh, no, Goto was in the middle of leaving. So then they fucking went to, uh, they went to, uh, not Goto, they went to, no, they went to Pogo first, and they felt the match had been done so many times, so they were like, no, we're not doing this, and then, um, oh, come on, man. he left anyway, he quit, like, two days before the fucking shit anyway, and, uh, over 60,000 seats were sold for Onita's retirement and all that good shit, and then they fucking go to, uh, there's a good shot of Combat Toyota, who to this day runs a Korean barbecue. You ever, see that, you ever see that movie, Who's Harry Crumb? Yeah, hey, real quick, I just got to point this out about the whole thing with Onita that was, like, fascinating to me. So then they go to Tarzan and Goto, and Goto's like, you know how many times I've been turned, then you're going to turn me back? And he goes, and originally I wasn't even asked to do the fucking retirement match with Onita, so fuck this shit. I'm not doing it. And then we're like, had 56,000 seats sold for the biggest show in the history of the promotion. Onita's huge retirement, and Onita didn't even have a fucking opponent. So in hasty oh, order, they fucking throw Hayabusa so, out there. So it's like Jap so it's like Japan's answer to the Black Scorpion. Yeah, but I mean, these chicks <laughs> started out together, and they originally came in as a humongous heel stable into FMW. And Jesus Christ, somebody on this earth tell me that Megumi Kudo isn't like the hottest chick ever. Like, right there, those shots of her and everything, like coming to the ring, it's like, good Lord, could you create a more beautiful woman? She doesn't have a rear end and boobs and all that, you know, but, I mean, Christ... Uh, and I'm pretty sure you can see me with Sato, who fucking, to me, is one of the greatest, man. Because, like, regardless of her, she was always going to have to play second fiddle because Miwa Sato was fucking broken in by the FMW and trained by Goto himself. So she was always going to have to play second in line to be in a baby face to, 
to, of course, uh, Kudo. But it was like, you know, at this point, they had done and shot the entire angle where they um, knew that it was going to be Combat Toyota's retirement. So Toyota says, Kudo, whatever you do, I want you up here right now. I'm going to wrestle you in the most dangerous match because I'm going to go out. If that's the way I'm going to go out, that's how I'm going to go out. And then they did the entire thing where Kudo says, all right, fine. But I wanted you in a real traditional wrestling match. And But uh, how dangerous this match is going to be for both women and all women is just going to be something. So they go to the still uh, owner, Onita. And they go to him and they go, look, you're the owner even though you're retired. And he said, no, absolutely not. That match is too dangerous for women to do. Women should never wrestle in that kind of match. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about the entire fucking angle. And uh, basically, Onita reluctantly says, okay, you two can wrestle each other in a barbed wire explosive match. Anybody points out, any of the critics point out that right there, the champion going into this, that Combat Toyota was going to be the... You know, I mean, she was the opponent for Kudo, who was the number one babyface girl in the entire promotion. But being that this is her retirement, this is like her time to... Yeah, she had both titles. She had the women's um, independent title. And I mean, like, she had the coolest fucking look. But when you look at her nowadays, she just looks like an old... Like, just a heavy set old older girl that's, like, retired and she's... Over there in a Korean <laughs> in a Korean barbecue place, it's the coolest thing ever. But she's got her her apron on, you know, for making, you know, whatever she makes there and everything. Could be worse. She could look like Mr. Kim. <laughs> From um, so it's always sunny, um, which we Mr. riff to. <laughs> Mr. Kim, you know, she's only thirteen. <laughs> the fucking president at the time. Uh, you do you remember this man? He actually committed suicide. The guy that owned FMW president yeah. of it and everything but leading up to it he put out a tell-all book where he was like one of the major stars was a major bitch on wheels to work with and the other one that was pretty much a star was a lesbian and she'd sneak into the dojo and eat women out at night and i just thought like that was so sleazy of him to do to turn in all the tabloid shit and he would always say how Onita booked this thing just for his own pure satisfaction and ego. Who the fuck expected it? This guy's out there bleeding and crying every night to his fans. Don't lie, I'm enduring all this pain for you. Who the fuck wouldn't be the fucking hero? Are you telling No, come on. You can't be. Can't, don't be. Poor you trying? guy, you gotta sit through like this 44 minute fucking thing with these who, two. Who are you trying to fucking work, Tony? Don't. You know, one, wrestling's never had a sleazy moment. <laughs> and two, we've never had a booker slash owner that put himself over as the top fucking star in the promotion. I want to say this, and not to be a fucking pig or nothing, and because Hito could beat the fucking shit out of me in two seconds. But yeah, Kudo is like easily one of the most beautiful women on the earth at this point. Combat Toyota is Combat Toyota, man. I mean, like I said, these two train, they broke in together. They're... Their history and friendship is kind of like when you look at Hayabusa and Mr. Ganesuke. Like, they had Ganesuke and, like, Hayabusa, like, uh, Iseki. Oh, man. Look at that picture of her. Just like a fucking... There's no way God could create a hotter chick at that point. Yes. But I believe he did later on. Her, and, name, uh, was, and her name is Trish Travis. Oh, uh, you want to hear a great fucking story? So one time me and Rotten sitting there with a Corporal Robinson and... and uh, and they're telling Hito when Hito came down to IWA Mid-South, they're like, your wife, <clears throat> she's a better worker than you. And Hito's going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's smiling along and they go, that guy out there, Necro Butcher, he wanted to have sex with your wife. And he was like, oh. And just had this kind of weird look on his face. They didn't tell Necro. <laughs> Did you forget that? <laughs> they forgot to tell Hito that it was a fucking rib. The Necro never said any of that shit. And the next night, Necro gets back from the fucking ring. He's like, ooh, man, I don't know if I owe that son of a bitch money or what, man. And I can just hear the smacking. And Look at this, man. See, this is like, uh, who wants to even bother to elaborate on the decline of fucking deathmatch wrestling? You're watching it right now because after this point, man, nobody could top these two. And look at how much they put over the fucking barbed wire. Everybody sucks nowadays. You all suck. You're fucking awful. If you're so great and so innovative with fucking death matches, why is the whole thing dying like a fucking bomb? I'll tell you why. The emphasis, blah, 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 ECW, all the passe shit that you always hear about shit. But back then, this was built up so fucking big.
FMW should have never shied away from his deathmatch roots. And once it got into that uh, WEW, Wrestling Entertainment, uh, fucking, what were you doing, man? You bunch of goofs. Fuck. You're still a bunch of goofs. Look at how fucking hard she is kicking the shit out of her. And by the way, when I go to Japan, my big, big moment in time is going to be meeting up with Miwa Sato. And, yes. and fucking, that's awesome. Bitch, you better have my money. No. <laughs> there is a shot of Onita right there at ringside. And the look of concern on his face, because he knows that, ooh, shit. I shouldn't have let them do this. Because the women go to him and basically say, hey, if you don't let us do this, we're not having the match and all these tickets are sold. I think it's so cool how so much shit's like a total shoot in Japan. Like their fucking press conferences, I just quit FMW. They go fuck themselves. And then like, <laughs> they come up there and they're like, you know, like, there is no kayfabe in Japan like that. Like, you know, like that. I still, my still. Look at how they put over the fucking emphasis once again on how destructive the exploding barbed wire is. Still my favorite press conference moment is, um, Brock Lesnar after that when you up saying when he just fucking heals on everybody and he goes I'm having a beer I'm having my beer I ain't drinking the yeah, fucking sponsor I'm not drinking the sponsor Coors Light's fucking I'm beer here. I hate that I think he said Bud Light they go, I'm gonna sit down with a Bud Light and it pissed him off too I'm gonna sit down with a Bud Light and go home and fuck my woman <laughs> who his woman in case you don't know is the 400 I ain't saying that because I want Brock Lesnar to the fuck up <laughs> I don't give a shit. He looks like I'm gonna shut my fucking mouth about Kuma uh, Kudo because he looks like he would. Looks like he does not give a single fuck. Do you know what these two when they first invaded FMW? They were they invaded as like the outbreakers. You know they invaded as like um, like you know basically like an invasion of hey we're the old Japan women. Nobody can fucking you know. Well, that's another thing too, man. Kudo had the coolest gear like. She'll make that one-legged ring attire work. Fucking Jimmy Jacobs just killed it. Like, always Billy Travis. Jimmy kinda. Jacobs killed a lot of things. <laughs> I told you about Jimmy, though. One night I was, like, taking down a ring over there for Evolve. Because yeah. they borrowed my fucking ring. And, um... Is this the same ring? Behold, yeah, Jimmy Jacobs was like, hey, man. What, the one that the cage fell when the, the squid boards, the retards yeah. over there? I'm also Gino's. talking about the time um, Lawler told you it was so fucking hard. Oh, that one. No, that was the old S and V ring. Oh. Once again, see they put over the emphasis on a uh, barbed wire, and there's like well, the cutest dimples alive on Kudo when you saw her struggling there. Any fucking that's the problem with wrestling in general though today is they the, 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 the stipulations mean nothing. The angles mean don't nothing. mean shit. And that barbed there's wire no, right there looks like the most dangerous fucking thing on this planet. As like Kudo's fighting for her life to not be thrown into it. What it you like? What you would think? I. Someone trying to throw me in that fucking bar bar. I'm gonna try my damnedest. Yeah. Not the fucking. I hate so bad how Americans just extracted the worst out of the death matches. Like there was a pure science to how fucking Onita Pogo and Goto fucking did it. It was just unreal, unbelievable. <clears throat> but as for uh, the FMW sleaze, look at that. Even body slam means something. It's like, well, it is her retirement, and of all people that they have wrestled, and these two had. Turned so many times before, but it was still the emotional thing of this great big heel was coming in here. Of course, Kudo's retirement was one year after this, and then Miwa Sato's retirement was like six months after that. So this promotion was doomed bad. Yes. You know, but um, who could keep up with that kind of style? I mean, what the fuck? Onita fucking got elected to the Japanese diet, you know, that's equivalent of the United States Senate. I could yeah. go on and on about him. And then it was like, at this point, five years later, he got into an enormous sex scandal because... He was in office over there, and once again, putting over that, that barbed wire is going to kill someone, right? Yeah. And you see her taking the hard-ass kicks and sucking up the pain, all because she doesn't want to get kicked into it. You're trying, you're trying to sell the people again, Tony. Come on, a politician in a sex scandal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. But Onita had uh, apparently like approached Will Tra Chamberlain's thing of over 100,000 chicks, and then he had to deal with the adult video star... He arranged a fucking threesome on a goddamn government budget. You know, it's like, Onita? Boy, I'll tell you something. I, I fucking love Onita, though. Still the nicest fucking guy, too. That's something about as bad as um. This is insane. <laughs> Watching two women try to throw each other into exploding barbed wire. Yeah, I mean... And, you know, Kudo went on with the married life, got two fucking kids, a boy and a girl, and... I mean, man, she really did 
you know, at this point, it was like, I bet you the Matt Sinaga brothers had to, like, kick themselves in the balls and be like, we had this girl here. Yeah. Cause you remember she left, and then she did all those uh, catalogs and all that. It's a power slam. One, two. Kick out. Which, you know, at this point, I mean, they're just, of course, they're building up toward it. But, I mean... I love on a one tape trader I put out there. He's like, listen to all the FMW match listings, and he makes a comment about Kudo. He goes, he goes, God damn, He goes, you know, if uh, somebody should fucking arrest Onita for having a Kudo do any death matches. <laughs> yeah, and I'm struggling over the barbed wire, and wasn't boy, that, wasn't that a Noki's? Wasn't he elected to the? Diet, yeah, that's diet, right. The diet, too. I think it was. But Onita was so much stronger. Because he was coming off this whole thing. Like, you watch early FMW, and boom! There it is. Oh. And, like, if you want to see how this promotion has gone downhill, now they do the first women's death match, right? And I love how the referee sells the explosion, too. But now they have gone to the, uh, the you know, the whole death match thing. is now hit the women like this. Like... There's Kudo's fucking back all disgustingly fried, like her arm and armpit. Well, I'm sure it was probably part shoot, too, but I love the um, cell, though, uh, for when she hit it. Yeah. It looked like she was fucking almost electrocuted. Oh, yeah. Like, she's just in so much fucking pain right now, and, and here's, like, here's uh, Toyota going, all right, well, I'm going to finish her off. Jesus, that's nasty, because those rings are hard as fuck. So right here, it'd be like, no way she's kicking out. Oh my god, that's one of uh, Combat Toyota's signature moves, and she kicked out? Get yeah. the hell out of here. But um, the coolest thing about a lot of the FMW women is how they all moved on. <clears throat> like, one of them runs Ice Ribbon Promotions, and like, Miwa Sato became an ordained, an, uh, an evangelist. She became a uh, born-again Christian, and she goes on religious missions to help poor people all over the world. Cool airplane spin. Inverted. And it's something weird, like, someone pointed out Onita and his mannerisms when he's selling. It's like, it's so, like, you look at Kudo, and she always has her knees bent, and it, like, always feeds for something else that anybody's going to do. But, I mean... You look at how brutal, like, that All Japan Women's style was, man, to even be elected to participate for them. I mean, Jesus Christ. The Crush Girls, I mean, were just the yes. biggest things to ever come through Japan. But, I mean, when you look at, like, like I said, like, a lot of them, before they went to moving on and stuff, they all had, like, good lives after. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have the retirement steps like they did on All Japan, but, you know. FMW at this point became like the big number three. I mean, well, I want to say something positive here. It was at least they actually had a positive outlook after wrestling. There's a move right there that I didn't understand and or enjoy too much. Like your shoulders are pinned down to the mat. Like why yeah. wouldn't the referee count that? But anyway, it's stuff like that that I could sit there and nitpick because I'm still like a wrestling nerd down deep inside. But you can see the deliberate execution, which goddamn it, they're going forty fucking minutes. You know, I thought Kudo's matches with Shark were just, you know, like her retirement against Shark, another emotional thing. But if I actually sat here and watched the whole thing, complete with the elongated uh, ending and then following the chicks into the um, locker room and everything, and ba boom! Oh. So there we go. Friggin' now that the score is even and the crowd's getting up and they're going, oh yeah, she's gonna. And there's the look of, o you know, the look on Onita's face like, what am I doing? Oh my god. Like, sending these... Whoop! You see her gig. <laughs> she just gigged the fuck out of her arm. Wait, you know, look, I'm concerned again on Onita's face. That sushi's going, oh, fuck. What am I doing? That cameraman? Yeah, you know, job for the WWE. In the right, yeah, in the right hand. <laughs> She's getting rid of the blade. If you look closely, you can actually see. Yeah, Kudo's gigged her left arm, too. Because she knows what side of the body to work. But yeah, the referee picked up the blade. Well, I'm sure you know what side of the body to work, too. <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those things where I just became a big enough mark, I had to fucking do it for myself. That was the last of a dying generation of that shit, though, because now it's just all marks, and it sucks. It's just weird how she's kind of like bow-legged, kind of, you know? When you're looking at Kudo, she is, she's bow-legged. But yeah, it was like a year after this, and she just, she had enough. She was ready to get out. I'm going to leave that alone. 
Uh, I'm man. There's a lot of women in wrestling that walk bow legged, but <laughs> for a completely different reason. That's the difference between the Japanese women. They were taught like no fucking dudes, no booze, no nothing. Like it was so strict over there, and fucking if they had to weed out people like that, like I said, like I mentioned this thing in an argument. I was like, yeah, bro. Oh man, she got herself good juice on her arm. If you don't, isn't notice. that why um the jumping bomb angels had to leave the WWF? It's because they were, they got caught fucking, they were fucking guys, and they were like, basically like breaking all the... Yeah, I heard something like that. I had heard that, I don't know how... So it was like a disgrace to the people back in Japan, they were like, you come home and bow your head in shame, and that was it. I've been told that many times Damn, by my mom. that kick was so fucking hard, man. Like, honest to God, man, somebody kicked me like that in the ring, I'd be like, what the fuck, dude? You know? <laughs> what fucking pussy. You know, you got females out there that... It's tougher, they work harder. You can really see the promotion is declining though. Like I said, one year ago in the in the um in in the um not the same building because they lost that big building. They were shutting it down for like to be renovated. Yeah. And they never even bothered again with Kawasaki Stadium. I think the stadium just sat there to rot. So they moved over to another building and there's only about only about sixteen thousand people here to witness this. But ticket prices were kind of jacked up, number one. Number two, they had to do something involving Onita at this point because Onita was the only one. I mean, fuck. The next night that they ran after the big retirement thing, oh, that's awesome. Just a spot where I'm yeah. beat up, I'm exhausted, fuck you. Yeah. I thought the cutest thing was back in um, 93 at the fourth anniversary when they had Kudo hold up the check when she beat those chicks up from, from the All Japan women. And uh, and the check was so big, the novelty check, and a big gust of wind caught. She almost flew over with the fucking thing. And yes. You hear the crowd chuckling and laughing. Also, if you make oh, a, you also you remember, if you remember that side of the rings where he'd been dead, a tip, set off. A tip for any p future promoters: if you have a novelty check, please make it out to kayfabe. Don't actually make it out to the <laughs> actual Austin person. Idol. <laughs> Austin <laughs> Idol, because you will be um. And she's, you know, I haven't even scraped upon all the other bizarre subcultures, man. Survival Tobita, fucking Rima Go wrestling all of his aliens. I mean, like, Japan is such a wonderful place for such bizarre and obscure. I should have fucking included, like, a shitload of Survival Tobita matches. He took sleaze off the fucking charts there. The guy's wrestling the lake monster in the fucking river. I mean, it's ridiculousness. <clears throat> but here was, like, a point in time where it was still, that's such an, I'm stealing that. Fuck you. I'm Fuck stealing it. You. Fuck you. I'm stealing it. I'll get that little guy at the gym to do it with me. Um, he ain't talking about me because I'm not little or anything. Yeah, don't take any of these references that we cough out here, like sexual or anything. Yes. But yeah, like for all those years, like Sato knew that she was going to have to play like second fiddle. Well, at first they weren't even booking her. And at first, like Magnificent Mimi, they brought her in and shoved her to the fucking moon. Along with, um, well, when you saw Despina Montagas getting booked with this promotion, then you find out later <laughs> that she's fucking Goto's wife, you know? Or not Goto, Sato. Tarzan, uh, I'm saying Tarzan Sato. Tarzan Goto. Pogo's just a mean old fucking dude, man. The way you'd see him beat the fuck out of those young kids. See, watch. And now... Bam! She finally gets to sit, hit her like sit-in power bomb that she was looking for at first. Damn! Talk about a near finish close call. I'm like to me, she was awesome, man. Like between her, Asia Kong's like one of my all-time favorites. Oh, Asia Kong! Oh shit! But right underneath that, man. I mean, like, huh? God, you know how much power you have to have. I don't care how small Kudo yeah. is. Kudo isn't really that small. She's taller than... She looks really tall, as a matter of fact. Like, when you're looking at her? Yeah. I'm probably going to eat my words for saying this. You know what current thing is in the last probably five years? is kind of take out the barbed wire and this. Mm hmm It reminds me of the um, Gail Kim Kong series from TNA. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you can see the Gail Kim... Some people... I don't... And it, it, the whole yeah, thing with the, her and Kong, it built up so great, man. But yes. it's like nobody knew what to do with Kong. And then they give her everything she wants. 
and fucking Awesome Kong just goddamn like splits and goes to have a kid and then has a miscarriage. There's Onita crying again. Um, again, another shot. Like the third good shot of Onita. But the uh, neat thing about like looking at a lot of this is just the emphasis on it. I mean, Onita's cried a million times, but now it's like he's crying because somebody else is hurting. Yes. You know. But um, in, yeah. the, in the States, the closest thing that we ever had to any of this right here was probably like Mickey Knuckles and Lefisto. I thought that they were going to be the next one of these two. But by then, you know, it's passe and no one give a fuck about death matches anymore. So we here in America, we just take this shit, we bastardize it, and it's like, these people are doing it for a reason. What's, um... But when you see, like, stuff that they do in Big Japan now, it's, like, stupid. I <laughs> think the it's fuck like, are they doing um, it for? I'm gonna make a... But, like, the, um, sl like, the slasher movies of the 80s. Mm -hmm. When it was done right, like, Friday the 13th, and there's some other independent uh, yeah. ones that were done r Halloween... But when it's when we lost all of our point of reference of, okay, let's just spill a fuckload of blood. Yeah. Cool spot. Watch this, folks. This is just wicked. Yeah. That's like a famous picture, too, of them both. you got to be fucking crazy. I mean, Jesus Christ, to take that kind of bump, if you saw where she was bumping into, that she bumped into the fucking middle and bottom rope, and there's Anita with his head down. Now he's full-blown crying like, I fucked up for booking this. Yeah. It's so cool how shit's like a shoot like that. <laughs> I like the referee had time to put on the goggles. Um, WWF Creative also cries like that, but for a completely different reason. But <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. Well, Onita always had that unspoken like charisma. Like He had this bizarre charisma. He just, you know, he attached with the people. And Jesus Christ, to look at Onita, you're talking about a guy, God, I could go into such a history about him, but... He was the WWF, WWF light heavyweight champion, and he was the man that Bobble went to since he started training with him when he was like 16 years old. And Bobble went to him and said, hey, look, you're my pupil, you're my understudy, you're going to be the next giant Bobble. And, you know, a couple of years of that light heavyweight style and his knees were demolished. He actually spent some time in jail in like 85, and then in 88, 87, he gets out, goes to that Pioneer show. And is like wrestling Rio Mago and all that shit. And because um, Rio Mago is another guy that was pretty much blackballed or bandaged for starting up his own independent to go head to head with the big two up there. Right? Talking about New Japan and All Japan. And, and it just kind of goes on and on. I mean, the, the story is so fucking neat. Of, I'm a poor man. I'm taking my last 4,000 yen. I'm going to run one show. And if this promotion's successful, if that show's successful, we'll run for one year. And that's it. You know, if it's not successful, Okay, we thank you people for your... You know, like, <clears throat> that unique Onita story and the exploding barbed wire and all these death matches, it was beyond revolutionary at the time. It was like pro wrestling on acid to these traditional Japanese people paying attention. <laughs> Give them, like, a whole fucking thing about it. But, no, seriously, I mean, when you look at it, you're like, you got to be kidding, man. I mean, like, you have to remember in 1997 this shit that we were doing here in the United States. And then ECW being a chip, cheap jip of that, and, you know. Well, I think we... That takes some goddamn fucking strength. Yes. To fucking powerbomb a woman that big. And coming soon on Volume 2, Tony Myers does this to me. <laughs> right to yeah. it, right to it, and we got the fucking table back here to... Uh, I'm going to record when we go to the fucking wrestling school and shit. It's going to be a really fun week. I knew we were going to be too blind where you now. Will, where you will see, he was talking <laughs> about... Uh, he was talking about Onita's weird charisma. You will meet the American equivalent of that. His name is The Creeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, you know, to even begin to, like, analyze where any of this has went to how any of this has evolved to this point where two women want to maim one another like this. It was because it was just, ooh, Jesus Christ, that was fucking brutal. <laughs> Ouch. And you're looking at that and you're going, how is that not the fucking finish? I can't believe she didn't beat her with that. Yeah. But it wasn't a kudo driver. That's why she didn't beat her. I remember one time, this like independent wrestler pointed out, he's like, I'm watching WrestleMania. He goes, you know what I hate about that show? He goes, it takes three leg drops to beat Vince McMahon. He's like, three of this other guy in, his, in that guy's match. He's like, three super kicks to beat that guy. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Remember when it was like someone's finish and that was it? You were done? We ourselves as wrestling fans and we ourselves as wrestlers have fucking outsmarted ourselves 
you know, to the point where we gave so much more and more and more, and even when it was real, people didn't give a shit because they knew it was a fucking work anyway, and we're a bunch of jerk bag fucking goof retards for fucking doing it. Kudo driver. This thing's got to be over. Two. Three. Because it is her fucking finisher. Yes. And now, this brutal fucking match. They've been fucking scorned. They've been burned. Fucking Kudo actually beats goddamn Combat Toyota in, in Combat Toyota's retirement match. It was like that one victory that Kudo had to get over her if the women's division was going to survive. So, um, so basically by this point O'Neill pretty much learned his lesson. So it was the um, because he had yet to physically return to when action. you talk when you talk about he she needed this win. So it's kind of like the female version of the Tommy Dreamer, Raven. Yeah, that she just had to have it just to have it. Where Dreamer could always he beat up Raven. He did all. Well, this it shit. was about time that and yeah. then he finally Raven. Uh, Raven was leaving to go to WCW. They had to have that win. But, um, you know, at this point, I was like, well, Kudo's still going to be here, and Toyota's retiring to go yeah. and run her own friggin' Korean barbecue deli. Yeah. So, and I think she's a really, 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 like, underrated, unspoken of when you talk about some of the best women. I mean, at this point, Toyota was so fucking beat up, and so was Kudo, from giving all that they gave into FMW. And it was always like a supporting undercast. Whoever was there, okay, of course the boss is the first one in the ring going, all right, look, we fucked up. Yeah. He's throwing a fucking tantrum. He's like, these women are so fucking hurt. So he's pissed at everybody down to the referee for not stopping it. I love how the young girls, when you go back and you look, you see the young girls running around everywhere, you could just point out who became what and all this stuff. Oh, this was at the point, too, where Onita was eating like a pig every night. Because he's up to like, yep, dumps all the cold water on him. That doesn't wake him up. He's screaming in Japanese. He's like, get these two to the back. Hurry up, revive them. What, what have I done to them, you know? They have I, the weirdest shaped bottles in Japan. They always look like douche bottles. I um, I told, I think I told you the other night when it was on the phone, I loved that touch when they did it in Memphis with the Eric Embry. Yeah. When they threw the moon dogs through the... the yeah, the battery acid. The battery the acid. And they're throwing the drinks in his face to try to... Yeah. And he's still taking back bumps, you know, yeah. selling it. You know, I mean, it didn't look ridiculous. It looked like something's wrong. This guy's freaking out a little too much, you know. This isn't, yeah. you know. But that was so cool. I remember they did, like, a big news feature on Miwasata. I got the world's largest FMW collection, including, like, all handhelds and stuff, you know. But that's... You see her crying, and you see Onita realizing, oh, what have I done, you know. I mean... Stuff like this can't write itself to where it's like real life. I bet you Anita was feeling some of that too. Like, what the fuck, man? All right, she's but, um, <laughs> but when they when they do the when you do the real sort of you're making it look, I know everyone hates the work shoot. Thing, yeah. But when it works, and it works so well like this, when you save it like that, yeah. When you save it like this. Not like yes. Vince Russo in 2000. Where, oh, gee. Fuck. I used, to, I used to look back at those as pure comedy value. Like, you got to be shitting me. They really did this? Get it's pure fuck. comedy value that fucking Vince Russo ever got anywhere near. Jesus Christ. That, that was the beginning of the unwinding for American, you know, entertainment in the industry. And that was the beginning of the doing, the undoing of so much in Japan because they hoard out so much of what FMW... I mean, shit. Then Onita needs a payday. He goes into... You remember this one, man? He goes into New Japan. Because even eight years after Baba's death, they still didn't want Onita come back. And he's got to have some problems with Big Japan. He's now out there. I never even got into the whole sex scandal with Matsunaga. Or not Matsunaga. Don't you ever find it ironic that they wouldn't let Onita in, but they let Johnny Ace in? Yeah, no shit. That's another one, too, man. <laughs> How that guy politicked his way to the top of the Japanese industry is fucking beyond me. They say it's because he used to run and get Baba's wife coffee and shit, you know? So like, it was like the... Um, still, though, the Japanese are too smart in a business sense to realize this guy's full of shit and he was a fruity fuck that carried a skateboard to the ring. And the fact that he was only in the business... Poor because, guy was such a heat, man, dude. Like, he was only in the business because his brother, brother was, was a, a huge fucking star 
And he was only in Japan, probably, because his brother was such a huge fucking star over there. He was only in the business because he was lanky and his brother was a star, right? I mean, not to dump and shit all over him, but I mean, still, well, there's so much I, shit there. I would hate, I would, to be, in, the, in full disclosure, I would hate to have the Axeman job, or my job, to have to go tell someone, hey, you know your dream of working here in the WWF, the one you wanted your whole life since you were five years old? Yeah, and you're hey, like this fucking guy here, hey, you know. Hey, you know what, you know what, it's over. Yeah. Sorry. You See there again. This aired on TV. There, that's why this is this version with all yeah. the elongated shots. And the, here we go. And I mean, like the drama is still fucking there, man. And you know, I'm, shit. This was but dangerous. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom! Big explosions that hurt people. And there's a, you know, a couple of weeks ago they did a, the concussion. Couple, I think it's like a couple of weeks ago they did the concussion thing with Triple H, where he had he had been hit. The night before, with the sledgehammer by Brock, and that's how they won the match. He has Joe Henning, which they're not doing any favors for him. That's another ramp or another. Ah, uh, here we are, where they finally meet eyes and lock eyes, and they're like, "Are you all right? My God, I almost fucking killed you!" And then they both realize, and they both say in Japanese, "They're like, this wasn't worth it. No rematch. Yeah, we ain't doing this again. No way." Until, Look at that, there's a burnt hole in the back of her fucking tights, for Christ's sake. Until, um... How insane is that? Yes, until Combat Toyota starts getting a bunch of letters asking him how, how, how much money you got paid to carry that turkey. Look at this, they've emptied out the place. This, if you remember, they did... I'm sorry, before I said 16,000 seats. They did... Oh, fuck, because they were at the other baseball stadium by this point. I think they did, like, 36,000 seats, which... I mean... They projected to do a whole lot more because they brought in Terry Funk and everybody else to come back in here. And, you know, they were actually slightly disappointed because it was like, oh, come on, people, this is the last you're going to see of Combat Toyota. It's just like, Sorry. by then it was like, well, Anita's retired. And, and then Anita kept coming out of retirement, all that. I so, mean, he was the Amer so he was the Japanese Terry Funk. Yeah, the only thing is, Funk didn't do it on such a national basis. Well, of, true. You know. And by the time, like, Onita was retired, it was, like, shows that he would restart up under the old FMW banner. At one point, it was Super FMW, Onita FMW. You know, it was, like, eventually, it's going to be, like, Money Mark FMW. FMW-U. <laughs> yeah. FMW-Neo. Yeah. Neo Geo. <laughs> I mean, 64. What, yeah, what else could you fucking say, man? I mean, it, you know, to me, the amazing part is... And you look back at, like, all this stuff, this was the first time they were fucking doing this kind of shit. Yes. It wasn't like, oh, goodness, you know, to now it's just so run-of-the-mill, like, man, do we really have to fucking, you know. What's, like I said. Nobody was, cares enough about any of the people to be enough. Look at it, here's that awesome bomb, watch this. You have got to be crazy. If you saw the way those two landed into those bottom strands of barbed wire, what are you, fucking crazy? Look at that German suplex. That's for a woman with a whole lot of weight on her, too. Jesus Christ. But, I mean, like, um... Kudo was beat up at this point, too. I don't think she was completely at her best. Which, like... Which isn't saying she wasn't fucking really good by then because she knew all the shortcuts, but she was in pain. Because she was taking shit like this. Bam! Look at that. What a pretty back bump, too. Yeah. I do. I still think them. Not to disrespect Miss Toyota, but she does look like um, John Candy, and when he's the um, <laughs> the um, air, con the air conditioner <laughs> repair guy, and who's Harry Crumb? Oh Christ! <laughs> no disrespect intended for that, but I just had to point that out. <laughs> I'm still going to get my ass kicked. <laughs> We're all bloody. There's the Kudo driver that ended it all. Hell. I like when you see Kudo's parents at fucking her retirement, and you're like, whoa, wow, that's what produced that. But anyway, uh, we're out of here for this one.